And a leading highway safety organization is changing its mind when it comes to seat belts on school buses. Yes, this is a very hot topic. The National Highway Traffic Safety Administration now recommends that every child be buckled in with a three-point seat belt for their entire bus ride. Now, this is a shift from the group's stance in previous years. The NHTSA says the change is needed to keep kids safe and to teach them about the importance of seatbelt usage as they get older. WSLS 10's Bethany Teague spoke with local school leaders about the new recommendation and explains why it might make a difference in, when it comes to these requirements. School administrators and bus drivers here in Southwest Virginia say they don't disagree that seatbelts could keep kids safer in some situations, but they say there are still a lot of unanswered questions. School bus seatbelts, good idea? The recommendation is to add safety belts. We have to take notice, we have to look at it. Bad idea. I've never in my experience driving the school bus thought that there was a need for it. Or somewhere between. What's it going to cost? What's it going to cost? The National Highway Traffic Safety Administration now recommends that every child be buckled in for their bus ride. Radford City School Superintendent Rob Graham says while restraints could keep kids safe during an impact, there are other scenarios to consider. What if you have an accident where there may be a fire on the bus, you have the children strapped in, you don't have but one bus driver, that bus driver could be injured. How are those children going to get out of their seat belts? That's one of the reasons 14-year bus driver Gracie Duncan says there's no way seat belts could be required without additional help. We would definitely have to have an extra set of hands. In Pulaski County, elementary school buses currently fit three children to a seat. Seat belts would limit that to two. So that would likely increase the number of buses that you might need. It would uh, change uh, bus routes. All of these solutions cost money. Right now, a new bus can cost anywhere from eighty-five to one hundred and ten thousand dollars. Something most school districts can't spare. If a state mandate comes down, local districts will have to comply. Many of them are simply asking that all sides be considered before a decision is made. It could be just as much help as it is harmful. Some school leaders say they would like to see a pilot program happen in just one school district at first. That way we could have a better picture of what it would take to make this type of change. In Pulaski, Bethany T, WSLS 10.